Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. I'm Imran Knight here and in this video, I'll be teaching you how you can solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. How this works is really simple. If you are trying to solve a normal Rubik's Cube with your eyes open, you would try to solve various pieces at once. But if you are trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded using the old Pockman method, you solve only one piece at a time. There are three different types of pieces in a Rubik's Cube. The center pieces, the edge pieces and the corner pieces. The edge pieces are the pieces which have only two stickers on them while the corner pieces are pieces which have three stickers on them. Centers are the ones which have only one sticker on them. To solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, there are only three simple algorithms that you need to remember. In fact, if you know to solve a Rubik's Cube with your eyes open, there's a very high chance that you already know these algorithms. The first one swaps two edges in a Rubik's Cube. It's also called as a T-permutation. Notice that this algorithm swaps this edge piece with this edge piece. You might say that these two corners are also swapped but we don't care about them right now. The algorithm required to swap two corners goes like this. So we have this corner swapped with this corner. Again we have these two edges also swapped but we don't care about them right now. And this last algorithm only comes into play if you have a parity. If you don't, you don't even need to use this algorithm. What this algorithm does is it swaps these two edges and these two corner pieces. Imagine there are four friends, F1, F2, F3 and F4. They're standing in the same order from left to right. The position where F2 is standing is a special position. Your task is to swap the positions of F1 and F4. However, there are two rules. One, you can only swap two friends at a time. Two, one of the two friends must be in the position two. So you just can't go ahead and swap F1 and F4 directly. You can swap maybe F2 and F3, then F3 and F1 and so on. Only the position two is important, not the friend who is standing there. Now go ahead and pause the video and try to find out how would you swap F1 and F4. First I go ahead and swap F1 and F2. Then I go ahead and swap F1 and F4. Then I swap F2 and F4. There you have it. Now back to the cube. Just like we had a special position in the previous part of the video, we also have such sort of a special position in a Rubik's cube. For edges, that special position is this piece right here if you hold green in front and white on top. Basically any edge that comes in the top layer and in the right layer of the cube. That is in this case, this edge right here is considered to be a buffer piece. And to be more specific, the top sticker of the buffer piece is considered to be the buffer sticker. Because as I said, an edge piece is made up of two different stickers. So you need to be very specific as to which side of the edge I'm talking about. For corners, the buffer piece is the one which comes in the left side, the top layer, and the back layer of the Rubik's cube. In this case, this piece right here is considered to be a buffer piece and especially the orange sticker if you hold in my way that is green front and white top is called the buffer sticker. That is why the algorithms that I showed you at the starting work completely fine. Notice that whenever I want to swap two edges in a Rubik's cube and I do that algorithm, I have this piece being swapped over here and according to a condition from the previous part of the video, that's completely fine. Also, you notice that we have one more edge piece that is being swapped over here. This piece right here, which is the other piece if you exclude the buffer piece, is called the target location. So this is our target piece and this one on the top here is called the target sticker. So basically if you want to swap any two edge pieces in a Rubik's cube, just bring one of those to the target location and your buffer should always remain a constant piece. For corners, if you go ahead and do the algorithm, notice that this piece here is the buffer piece and the piece which was affected excluding the buffer that is this piece will be called the target piece. This sticker right here is called the target sticker. Basically a buffer piece is the only piece in a Rubik's cube which has a permission to be swapped with any other piece just like how we saw in the friend segment. Let's say I wanted to swap these two edges. If I want to swap them, I can just do the algorithm and that swaps them easily. Well, what if I say you need to swap this edge piece with this edge piece right here? You might feel that's an impossible task because there's no algorithm which exists to swap these two edge pieces right here. However, notice that if I just do an L prime move at the starting, I now have these two edges in the same line. So now if I go ahead and do the swapping algorithm, Notice that I've swapped this edge with this edge right here. And now I can just go ahead and restore this piece from where it came. So basically the starting move that I did, that is L prime in this case, is called a setup move. All it does is it brings various different pieces from all around the cube to the target location so that it can be swapped around with the buffer piece. There'll be a list of all setup moves down in the description box so that you can bring any edge piece or any corner piece to the respective target locations. 
Now you need to know something called as the SPEFS lettering scheme. If I just go ahead and assign letters to individual pieces, say if this corner piece right here is the letter E, it's much more easier to remember in your mind than always remembering it comes in the left layer, it comes in the top layer and then it also comes in the back layer. So this is how the SPEFS lettering scheme goes. Make sure you hold green in front and white in top for just any two colors but make sure that they are always constant whenever you try to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded so that you don't have to figure out letters every now and then. This one here is called A. Go ahead clockwise and this is called B. Go ahead clockwise and this is C. Then go ahead clockwise and this is D. Now get back to how you originally started naming your cube and turn left. This is E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. Then turn back to how you originally started naming your cube and just rotate down. U, V, W, X. For corners, it follows exact same pattern. Just start with the top corner right here and go clockwise. So A, B, C, D. Rotate here. E, F, G, H. I, J, K, L. M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T. Rotate back and rotate down. U, V, W, X. So here's a quick example. Start off by taking a look where the buffer piece needs to go, especially the buffer sticker. So the buffer piece is a white sticker and a green sticker edge. So you need to look for white center and the green center. In this case, the white center is right here and the green center is right here. So this means that the white sticker and the green stickered edge needs to come between the two centers right here. We know that this is the letter C. This one needs to go right here, which is the letter D. And this one goes back to the buffer. Do keep in mind that whenever you reach a position from where that piece goes back to the buffer piece, you stop memorizing. So let's go ahead and start executing them. First, we want it to go to C. So I want C to go to the target location. How can I do that? It's really simple. One very important thing that you need to keep in mind before you bring this piece to C is that whenever we try to set any piece to the target location, we need to make sure that we aren't touching any of these three pieces right here. So basically, if I just go ahead and do a U move to bring C to the target location, that would not work because I'm affecting all the pieces right here. Instead, what I can do is something like this. Now you might say, hey, you just touched this piece position, but as you can see, even before doing the setup moves, these three pieces were like this. So your setup moves can include disturbing these three pieces location. But once you're done with the setup moves, you need to make sure that these three are exactly how they were before. So this works completely fine. Again, there'll be a list of setup moves done in the description. So make sure you go ahead and check it out. Now I can do the swapping algorithm and restore all the setup moves. Then I have the letter D. Now you need to know something called as a cycle. Basically, a cycle means where you just go ahead and swap all the edges till a position where you find out that the last edge piece which you have been to goes back to the buffer piece. So let us pick the same example. This one right here goes to the location C which goes to D. Now notice that D goes back over to the buffer location. So we say that we have done one cycle. So once we see that the last piece reaches back to where it came from, we say that we have ended the cycle. Now you need to know what is a new cycle. So let's go ahead and take a look where our buffer needs to go. This one right here needs to come over here. So that would be the letter C. But now take a look at where this piece goes. It goes back to the buffer piece. But do you also notice that we have two more unsolved edges? So you can't say that you have memorized the entire cube. You have just memorized a part of it. You can say that you have completed one cycle and you need to break into a new cycle. So basically a new cycle is something that you start when you have reached the buffer position before reaching to all the pieces on the Rubik's cube. Here we have not yet been to these two pieces. So we need to pick any one of those and make sure that when you're starting a new cycle, you end also at the same piece. So let us see if I start my cycle over here. I need to go throughout the cube and make sure I'm ending only over here. During that process, if I've been to all the edge pieces in the Rubik's cube, I can say I've completed my cycle. And if I've not been, I need to break into another new cycle. Basically, you go ahead and do this until you have been to all the pieces in a Rubik's cube. So let's go ahead and start memorizing. This is our actual buffer piece and this goes right here. That is the letter C. Now this piece goes back over here. So we stop memorizing the first cycle. So in our memorization, we only have the letter C. Now you can go ahead and pick any unsolved piece on the Rubik's Cube. I'll go ahead and choose the letter D for my new cycle. This one goes right here, which is the letter A. This one needs to go back over here, that is the letter D. Notice that I started from here and I'm also ending over here. And because I've been to all the edges, I can say that I've memorized all the edges. So here's how the execution would look. First, I have the letter C. Then I have the letter D. Then I have the letter A. 
then I have the letter D. So now what would happen if you have something like this, where you have all the pieces in the correct positions but two of them are flipped. Such sort of pieces are called as flipped pieces and because we are dealing with edges, this would be called as flipped edges. Notice that your buffer is solved, so you automatically need to start a new cycle. So now I'll consider this to be the new piece from where I'm starting my cycle. This piece right here is the letter C and this goes over here that is the letter I. Notice that we started and stopped at the same piece. So basically the memorization for this piece would just be C and I. Now we again need to break into another cycle because we have completed this cycle. So we are obviously remaining with only one piece so you automatically need to choose this one or this one. I'll just go ahead and choose the letter D. D needs to go over here that is the letter E. And because we start and stop at the same piece, we stop memorizing even this cycle. So first I need to do C. Then I have the letter I. Then I have the letter D. And then I have the letter E. Now let's take a look at parity. This can only happen if you have remembered an odd number of edges and an odd number of corners. So we need to know an algorithm which can swap these two edges and these two corners. That is called as the R permutation. Notice that this algorithm swapped these two edges and it also swapped these two corners. So whenever you remember an odd number of edges and an odd number of corners, you always know you're gonna get a parity. So once you have memorized your cube, you first need to solve the edges, then do the parity algorithm and then do the corners. In case you didn't have any parity, you just solve the edges first and then solve all the corners together. So to wrap up this video, here's a real quick example. So let's start by memorizing the whole cube. This one is the buffer sticker and we are mainly focused on this sticker right here. This one goes over here, which is the letter D. And now notice that D goes back over here so you don't have to memorize it because it's our initial cycle. And if you're having any difficulties, make sure you leave a doubt in the comment section so that I can get back to you. Now because we have reached our buffer piece, we need to stop memorizing this cycle and break into a new cycle. Remember that whenever we break into a new cycle, you need to memorize even the first and the last piece. Let us start off by taking a look at this piece. This is the letter U which goes right here. This is the letter L and this goes right here which is the letter J. This one goes back over here that is the letter U. So our final list for edges would be like this. Notice that we have memorized an odd number of edges which means that we are going to have a parity. Keeping that data aside, let's start off by looking at corners. This is a buffer sticker and this one goes right here. This is the letter V and because V goes back over here in this case, we don't have to memorize anything extra. So now let's go ahead and execute the edges. First we have the letter D. Then we need to break into a new cycle. In the new cycle, we first memorize the letter U. So I can bring U to the target location by doing something like this. Then I can go ahead and swap these two edges and undo all of my setup moves. Then I have the letter L. So I can bring L to the target location like this. Now go ahead and swap them and restore it back. Then I have the letter J. So what I'll do is something like this. Now notice that I have yellow on the top. So I can go ahead and swap them and restore all of my setup moves. Again, I have the letter U. Now that we are done with executing our edges, we had memorized only 5 of them, which means we memorized an odd number of edges and whenever that's true, you need to do the parity algorithm. And now for corners, we just had one letter, that is the letter V. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I hope this tutorial helped you solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. If you feel you're more comfortable with this method, you can watch some advanced methods on solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded here at the end screen.